capture one now on one roll. But which one's going to be the best for you? The most popular converter by far has been Lightroom, and I've used this continuously for quite a few years. It's uh, at the backbone of most photographers' workflow. It's easy, it's simple, it's powerful, uh, but there's a few other alternatives out there. Recently, I've moved over to Capture One software. Now, I do use Lightroom for some things. I use Capture One for some things, uh, but there are differences. I'm going to show you some of them here. But On One software have decided to release uh, their version um, of the On One Raw. Before, I used to use them just for filters and uh, some of their effects, which were pretty nice. But the the package that all into one uh, major raw converter with a, de a developed module. Now it is fair to say that this is early days for Armon Raw. They openly say that their product is not complete. There's lots of development. Um, they're moving forward with quite a few upgrades coming in the very near future. But I thought it's time just to put them together and see if it's going to be an alternative to to the other two. I'm going to cover a few things in this video. Now it's not going to be scientific. It's it's going to be a feeling of how I feel about uh, am I going to use these products? Which one am I going to settle with? Or am I going to use them all? So I'm going to start off with Lightroom. Now Lightroom has been a, a fantastic product for many years. I do feel that they've let themselves down a little bit. The, the development hasn't progressed quickly enough. Capture One, I moved to them earlier last year and uh, very very impressed i actually think the pictures are a lot more dynamic they a lot more detail in them um but they do come out with slightly different colors i'm going to cover several areas one just to see how quick they are now this is not going to be scientific i'm just going to have an idea i'm going to install a couple of files in each one and just see how quickly they uh, they load up and then I'm going to just compare some of the photographs and see how the different raw converters handle the photographs. Now they do do things differently. This is one of the major points with raw converters. They don't all do the same thing. They all interpret the photographs slightly differently. One of the reasons that I actually looked at moving to another piece of software was that I was having problems with it crashing quite a bit. Now I tried several ways to rectify this and I just couldn't do it. I am using the Mac 5K and it did have problems at the beginning, but it has been a little bit temperamental. But to be fair, when I moved to Capture One, it has had the same issues. Now I don't know if this is something to do with the 5K um, or it's just a, a, a problem with the software at the moment. Lightroom is by far the easiest to use. It's so simple. It, it's powerful. It's not so quick uh, compared to the others. Fantastic product. That's why a lot of photographers purely use Lightroom to do their processing. Okay, now we're going to look at Lightroom and uh, how fast does it actually import the pictures? But I'm just going to drop this in and it's not scientific. I'm just going to drop it in, hit the starter and let's see how long it takes. So here we go. This is the file. Now it's just coming straight off my desktop. So it's, it's, it's the quickest it can be. Uh, this is not coming from an external hard drive. This is just straight from the desktop. So it should be as quick as it can be. So let's hit import and start. As I say, it's not scientific. It's just giving us a reasonable idea. Now it's important the pictures. It's got to actually produce little thumbnails after this. So that's where the time is usually taken. I'll probably speed this video up so you get some sort of idea of what's going on. So we're uh, two minutes 45 in and it's still building previews. Now this was a file of 299 photographs, um, all NEF straight out of the uh, Nikon. Now, now you can see how long it's taken to load some of these pictures up by the loading screen at the bottom. Um, it's taking a, a short time, it's not massive, but it, it is taking time. Now that greatly reduces once your previews are done. That's why you must always make sure that you produce your previews. It just makes life so much simpler. So we're coming to the end now. Uh, we're very close to finishing the standard previews and we've been going over nine minutes. There we go. So that was approximately nine minutes, 15 seconds, let's say.
So, on to Capture One. Now, anyone who hasn't used Capture One before, it's a fabulous program. It really is very, very powerful. The control of the colour is awesome. There's lots of little things in there which are just superior to Lightroom. There's also some things in there that just don't work like Lightroom does. I have been using this to process my weddings for the last six to eight months. And the detail, the punch is fabulous as this program. Uh, so I'm going to actually upload this uh, set of files again. Again, it's 299 files. All these files are separate on the desktop. So there's three clean files going to in, into each one. So here we go. Import all. And let's just kick off that timer. So this is importing all the pictures. So that's about eight minutes, 10 seconds-ish. That's pretty much what I expected. Lightroom just, they seem to have just dropped the ball a little bit. They've not brought anything new out. They've not smartened anything up. Um, the engine seems a little clunky. Now they are speeding things up because I have to say, eight months, a year ago, um, when especially when I first bought this, uh, this iMac, it, it was awful. It was so slow. And one of the reasons I started looking elsewhere so Lightroom, I need to pick up the game a little bit now. It's still fabulous. It's still going to be the number one processor for most people. But there's lots of competition out there. They need to smarten up. So switching between photographs is reasonably quick. It's probably, to be honest, on par with Lightroom. But I do feel, and I'll show this in a minute, I do feel that the raw engine in Capture One is, is much better than uh, Lightroom's. It, it's a lot more dynamic. Now, this does come down to general settings. Now, you can adjust things. That's obvious. You can pump things up in Lightroom to, to, to match the dynamic range here. Um, but this does it out of the box. And that's because the settings, it actually lays on top. It, it's its interpretation of the, the raw file. Now, it does things that I don't like. Yeah, and I'm going to show you that soon anyway. Okay, on to 1-1 Raw. Now, this is where our test falls over because there's no actual activity bars or anything like that to tell us what's going on. And there's lots of reviews saying that it doesn't build previews and things like that. It, it does, it has to, uh, I would guess. Um, so it, once it's actually the first time you bring up the screen, it does bring them into the system. Now, it, I'm not sure how it does it. It is different from the other two but it's still a little bit slow to begin with, but then it does get lightning fast. So let's just go into our on raw file. Mm. And here you'll see up here, this is the file. Click into here. Now there's no loading into the system as such. And as you can see, the pictures are virtually there. Um, now you can view them much quicker than the others. The others took a you know, a minute to actually bring it up to this stage. Nope, they're all there. Let's just pick on a picture. Um, now, once it's been in this file a little bit of time, it does speed up, which makes me think it's produced previews in some way, which I'm sure it has to. But once it's actually viewed them um, once or twice, then it's, it's, it's super, super quick. So the viewing part of this is a lot like Photo Mechanic. If you've ever used that program, it's it's almost instant. You can see the photograph. It doesn't load them in like Lightroom and Capture One does. They're almost instantaneous. You can see them right there. Now this can, to be honest, this can take a bit of time. Sometimes when you go into a larger folder, like maybe your pictures folder, the uh, first time you go in, it'll take quite a while to look through, have our pictures before anything will come up. Now, what I've noticed, again, this is just my view, but the second time you go in, it's a lot, lot quicker. It's, it, it gets the faster, the more you go into them. So it, for me, it's, it's producing um, some sort of database um, to actually map them all. I'm not saying I know exactly how the, the, the program actually works, but it, it definitely is slow at the beginning. Now it does speed up once it's viewed that file in its entirety. So let's just pick a picture and go into the develop module. So that's about the same speed as Lightroom, I would say. And I know I'm comparing it to Lightroom. You sort of have to. That's the almost the industry standard, not what most people use. So, it, of course, it's going to be measured up against the best out there. 
Now, the thing that's most noticeable for me is when you're in this browser module, how quick you can scroll through this. I mean, these pictures now, because we've been in this file for probably five minutes, it, it, it's, it's, it's quick, it's super quick. And you can look through, grade them, rate them, um, and move on very quickly. And that's where I compare this to Photo Mechanic. You can, it's so fast to look through your photographs and grade them, um, and then jump into a develop module. Um, and process them as well, which is a super bonus. So here we go. We've jumped into a, 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 a browse picture of it. So we've, we've zoomed right in and we, we click into the develop module. Um, and it's about the same as Lightroom. So the most important part of these programs is how they actually look at your pictures and how the raw converter produces them on the screen. Now, all these programs, you, if you think they don't do anything to them, like add sharpening, um, uh, noise reduction, they do. Even Lightroom does. And they all do it into different levels. Now, so what I'm going to show you is how the image is interpreted by the program before you start work on it. So this is from the base where you start adding your adjustments and tune it the way you like. Now they do all look at pictures differently. You think that a camera just takes a picture? No. The actual program is an integral, important part of your workflow. And exactly how does it look at the picture? Lightroom is a little bit flat. It always has been. It needs pumping up a little bit, but it's a good basis to go from. I picked this picture specifically because there's lots of dark areas. So we want to see what's recoverable on these pictures. I'll just pop this into the develop module. The next one is on one software. There's detail in the picture, but it is a little bit flat. It does need a boost. And Capture One, as always, um, is very aggressive. Uh, and it produces a fabulous picture out of the gun. Very sharp, overly sharp. I find myself boosting Lightroom and turning Capture One back. So first of all, let's look at just little differences between them. So Lightroom, um, this area is reasonably dark. Um, you can see a little bit of detail. Let's see how much it'll actually cover when we boost the shadows. Obviously you wouldn't boost your shadows of this high, but this is just to show what each program does and the differences between them. And you can see lots of detail being brought out in the cliffs in the grass here, uh, it's, it's, it's really powerful. So out of the gun, capture one, definitely. It's a darker area here. The whole area, the whole picture is a lot darker. And let's see how much it actually recovers. Well, yeah, it recovers a lot. Now, there's still plenty of detail in the rocks, but there's still, uh, there's still more punch to this photograph. I actually much prefer this version of it because um, there still seems to be more details up here in the area of this house. Let's see how on one. Now, to be fair to on one, one of the first releases coming out is going to be a boost in the recovery items. Wow, that's boosted it a lot. Uh, maybe that's that update has actually been done because that is pretty impressive. Um, there's lots and lots of detail in this area. It's boosted it a lot more than uh, Capture One. And yeah, I'd say probably a lot more than Lightroom as well. So maybe that update has already been done, which is, which is fantastic. So let's have a look at highlight recovery. Now then, this picture is a lot different. It's a lot brighter. And so it's overexposed in the sky. We've got all the detail in the foreground, but that sky is too blown out. And there's lots of information lost. Quick little look at, oh, there we go. Yeah, there's quite a bit of information gone there. We'll be able to see if that is recoverable. Um, but as a, a basic picture, it's not too bad. Just that sky is overwhelmed. Wow, our one's done really well with this picture. Um, a, there's a lot more detail in the sky. It's a lot darker. Um, it is flatter again it just produces a flatter image and i think some work will have to be done on that uh capture one wow the picture is, is, is awesome in the in the foreground a lot of color lots of detail um, but again the sky is blown out and it's probably less detail in the sky than on one has done 
let's see what's recoverable so let's just over the top hit the highlight button and that has brought back a lot of the detail um, that has brought back a lot of the detail it's just the centerpiece which is blown out again let's see how Armand does so yeah not as good um, here it's still repositioning the color but here it's going very gray and you can see a lot of things going on over here so yeah maybe that's the boost that they're talking about it's not so good on highlight recovery definitely a big difference between the two its initial picture is much better but yeah that's disappointing so let's use Lightroom for its recovery and wow that's not very much at all compared to the other two uh, this is uh, uh, this is the worst performing look at the detail in the sky it's not so great so on what software it is definitely softer um, now let's have a, just add a little bit of sharpening let's see what happens and yeah we're, we're, we're dragging back to, to, to getting the image close to Lightroom and let's see if we can just bump up the white a little bit and give it a bit more range bump up the white a little bit handling the noise pretty well capture one just seems to have that better raw converter from a base from where you start your production this picture I've zoomed in a bit this is just to see how sharp the image is now this picture is normally exposed so how do these three programs handle it Lightroom yeah good job as Lightroom always does I'm on software yeah it's flatter it's not as sharp it still needs a little bit of sharpening um, I think I'm on software could could risk it a bit and go a bit sharper on all the photographs just boost them up a little bit and um, wow capture one again big punch <laughs> um, very sharp overly sharp and also the colors uh, there's a good range in there again the feel is just a tad of red uh, the red always seems to be a little bit boosted um, but it, mainly in skin tones and, uh, but yeah it, it's definitely a warmer image throughout the capture one processors and a full size again you can see that the images they're all pretty close but capture one definitely the strongest punchiest but if you look there is that that golden tone to it um, just needs to be toned back a little bit every time and Lightroom down the middle of the road does the job well and on my software a little bit darker but still an acceptable image okay so what I've done is produced three images um, one from each of the pieces of software of the same image the all JPEG now as you can see there's big differences now this is where you need to choose which program is going to be the best for you now personally I'm keeping all three at the moment I have them I'm going to use them I'm going to compare them <laughs> I, I like Lightroom I, it's so easy to use it's simple I'm doing capture one for my weddings at the moment but I can see that changing to be fair it's awesome the detail is fantastic the pictures are a little bit golden for me um, and yes it can be adjusted and uh, but it is a quite a complicated program that you do need to get used to and I'm getting there but it does need just a little bit of tweaking to, to, to make and I know you can set up custom profiles etc this is I'm just talking about out of the box how it feels and as for on one raw wow these guys are on the right track the price is unbelievable it does a really really good job and I'm hoping that the development keeps going in the right direction and we get something that I'm actually could swap out from Lightroom well maybe thanks for watching if you liked the video, please like, comment and subscribe.